Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to all. Jesus, good night. Welcome. May the Lord bless you here tonight. Cheer. Somebody said I feel good tonight. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. We welcome the Holy Spirit to be in our midst. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. God bless you wherever you are connecting from. May the Lord bless you. Canada is in the house. Olaba Bay is in the house. Welcome. Deep blue. <laughs> welcome. Welcome Canada. Welcome Florida, New Jersey. Hallelujah. Welcome. Virginia Beach, South Carolina. Welcome. May the Lord bless you. Boynton Beach, welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome. Jesus said he has overcome the world. And if he overcame the world, you will be chastised. You will go through stuff just like he did. Amen. I encourage you as you join to go ahead and share this message in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name that's above every name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Welcome, 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 welcome. Somebody said, I feel good tonight. To God be all the glory. Great things he hath done. Greater things he's getting ready to do. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for the Lord to do. Nothing. Turn it over to Jesus. And everything will be okay. It might not happen right away. But whatever you're going through, turn it over to Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray. It is well, it is well, it is well. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is well. Amen. Let us pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you for what you're doing now. And thank you, Lord God, for what you are about to do. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercies upon our life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we say thank you, Jesus. You have done it. You have done it. You have done it. You have done it. You have done it, Lord, and we bless your name. Bless your people that are gathering here this hour. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover myself right now. I decree and I declare that your people will begin to say it is well. In the name of Jesus, I soak myself in the blood. My God, I soak myself in the blood of Jesus Christ. Tonight we come against every plan of the enemy to stop us. Everything that the enemy tried to do to hold us back. We come against it. We raise the blood of Jesus Christ against it in the name of Jesus. My God, tonight I cover every soul that is here in the blood. For those of you who will watch another time, may the Lord bless you. Jesus, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord protect you. My God, it, will, it is well. It is well in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is well. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoa, we welcome the Holy Spirit to take full control, to take charge. We welcome the Holy Spirit to take charge. I just came tonight to speak to a few people. Amen. Hallelujah. Today was a wonderful day. The Bible said, He who has started a good work in you will take it to the perfect day of Jesus Christ. He who have started to work in your life, he will not leave you hanging. He will not leave you in the dark. He will not leave you on the wayside. He will not leave you to struggle. He who have started to work in you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will hold you up to the end. My God, he will see you through. Somebody go ahead and share. Welcome, welcome. Good, good night. Good night. Welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. I just want to speak to a few people that are here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yes. Mr. Ophelia, I salute you. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, church was good today. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we... Each time you climb to the top of the mountain, at the top, someone say, at the top of every mountain, it is the foot of another mountain. So when you get to the top of a mountain, it's not the end. It's the beginning of a new journey. So I encourage you, I encourage you to understand your assignment. When you accomplish your goal, you start working on your next project. You don't sit down. You don't fold your arms and relax. You begin to process your next project. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> You have to 
in this life people of god you have to be obedient in this life you have to be obedient it doesn't matter your status it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter what you have it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter who you're connected to it doesn't matter your last name you have to be obedient and as many of you who were watching the live broadcast earlier today and if you watch to the end you would have seen what the Lord did God is faithful God is a faithful God and when you make yourself available he will use you somebody go ahead and begin to share this message when you make yourself available to the Lord he will use you God is not looking for God is not looking for good people to use. He's looking for people who are available. God is not looking for people based on their last name. He is looking for availability. God is not looking for a special group of people to use. He's looking for a special group of people who are available. Not a special group of people who are involved in this or involved in that. God is looking for available souls that he can use where he can manifest and he can download and he can upload and he can take over that are available so he can get the glory. If God knows that you're going to say you did it on your own, he's not going to use you because what God is looking for is glory. And if God use you to do something and you keep on saying, I did this for you or I did that for you, it means that you're taking his glory and God don't share his glory with no man. Amen. The Bible tells us he don't share his glory. He said we were created for his glory. He's not willing to share his glory with any man. So once some people begin to take God's glory and they will tell, I help you. I did this for you or I did that for you. God won't get glory from that because we are robbing him his glory. So whatever is going on in your life, whatever you are going through, I came to talk to somebody here today. Whatever you are going through, it's not about you. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about the work of God. He said, in my time, I will make all things beautiful. Not your time. In his time. It means that he's not going to come when you call him. He's going to show up when you need him the most. He's here concerning our needs. How? According to Philippians. He shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. So his riches is not for your wants. <laughs> his riches is concerning your needs. So as much riches that there is in heaven... It's not for your wants. It's for your needs. The word said, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. So the two key words here, riches and needs. My God. So when you want something, your want is not a necessity. Whatever you want, it's not a necessity. There are some things we shouldn't even pray about. Because we want it. We don't need it. We want it. 
And God said, I will supply your needs. So whatever you want, don't ask God for it. Go and get it on your own because it's a want. It's yes. When you desire something and it's a need, God will bless you. The word of God said, he will, in the book of Psalm, he will grant you the desires of your heart when you delight yourself. So God will show you favor. Mm. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome, South Carolina. Canada, welcome. Maryland, welcome. Somebody go ahead and share this message. Pennsylvania, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Windsor, Connecticut, welcome. Wherever you're connecting from tonight, welcome. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Glory to God. Wherever you are connected, London, England, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God made it clear. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. So need, that's what God is interested in. He's not interested in your want. He show your favor. Anytime you want to favor you, he'll favor you. It might have been something that you desire. It might have been something that you were thinking about. But you're not stressing Oh, New York, welcome. You're not stressing about it because it is a want. I want this. I want that. I need this. I need to finish this project so I can move to the next level. If you have a project to finish, it's not a want. It's a need. It's something that needs to be completed. It's not a want. So when you have something to complete, God will stand by you, Hartford, Connecticut. God will stand by you and make sure this thing is completed. Hallelujah. It's completed. Jesus, the thing has been completed. So he will allow it to happen. It will come to pass. God don't lie. God never lie. He will never disappoint you. God will never promise you something and don't deliver. Who am I talking to here? He will never lie to you. Man will fail you. Woman will fail you. Your friends will fail you. Your spouse will fail you. Your children will fail you. But God will never fail you. Why? He's a promise keeper. He's a covenant keeper. Oh, Arideko Sataya. Whatever you ask for and you didn't get it, you cannot blame God. Because He knows what you need. He knows exactly what you need. Have you ever met someone and they have the right package everything that you desire was in that package have you ever been somewhere and you're in a situation and all the things that you need to come out of that situation god sent one person to bless you with all of that so you know he supplied your needs if you want something and you're so desperate for it because somebody in the family or someone from your friend group has it and you want it too, you think that, you know, because the friend have it, you, you got to get it. That's not a need. That is a want. That is a want. I came tonight to talk to some people because many of us are saying that God didn't come true when we ask for certain things. You're asking God for something that God does not plan to release in your life because he has greater in store for you. Many times we, we desire, we want some things, we're working hard to pay for it. And suddenly the thing didn't happen. Why? God has greater in store. So whatever you want, 
it's not about you. Just say, Lord, whatever you desire for me. Lord, whatever you want me to have, that's what I'm expecting from you. I, I, I'm not going to ask you for anything anymore. I'm going to ask you for your will to be done in my life so you can get glory from it. When you tell God that he need to choose your friends. He need to send that spouse that he has ordained for you. He need to send, yes, he need to send you to direct you to that job. He will do it. But when you said, God, I want this job and I want it bad because sister so-and-so worked there, my niece worked there, my nephew. No! You're planting yourself there because you know someone there. That does not mean that because you are friends and relatives in the same field, that's where God wants you to be. You already supply your needs, so now we're going to talk about your want. So just tell God, whatever you have for me, Lord, I'll take it. Many times we ask God for something, and he allows it to happen. And then we begin to fail. And we said, God gave this to me, it is from God. No, you ask for it. And it's the favor of God. Because you may be faithful to him. So he gave you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. David. Was working for Jesse. His father. Tending to the sheep. He knew how to play the musical instrument. He knew how to pray. He knew how to fight with animals. Hallelujah. He knew how to navigate in the mud. He knew how to walk in the rain as a shepherd boy. Tending to the sheep. He knew how to gather stuff. He knew how to get them in order. So all that was training. When the time came and he became a king, he knew how to handle his business. Mm -hmm. David knew how to handle his business. Why? He knew how to handle his business because he has been in training for a long time. So whatever he needed, God bless him with it. Whatever he wanted, he had, you see, he desired to sleep with other women that were not his wife. So that was a want. So God allowed him to do it. And then he paid the price. God allowed him to sleep with someone else's wife. But then he lost a child. Many times our want can get us into trouble. Many times our want can selfishly cause other people to lose their life. Yes, many times that the things we want, it jeopardize other people's lives. Our selfish desires. Jesus, who did God send me here to talk to tonight? Many times our selfish desires, it causes us to put friends and relatives in trouble. We set up our own family because of our selfishness. Many times we are greedy. Yes, because God already blessed us. But we want to keep everything for ourselves. And the, the level of greed that some of us have, it hurts. The level of greed that some of us crave, my God. But we pray tonight that whatever God has for us, that's what we want. We don't want what we want anymore. We're going to want and desire whatever the Lord has for us. Whatever God has for you. It can only be something good. And when God bless you, no one can take it from you. Whatever God has for you, this is the prayer that you need to pray. Say, Lord, let your will be done. 
not my will, not my selfish desire, not my secret desire which is causing my family pain and anguish. Many of us, the things that we desire, the things that we want, the things that we are asking God for, God will never release it. Why? Because it's going to cause us pain. I'm telling you, many times the things that we ask God for, it's not of God. No. No. Many, somebody said greedy will choke the puppy. Many times the things that we are fasting and praying about, it's greed. It's selfish. God won't approve it. There are some people in this world that are sowing some seed. And these seeds are evil. Because they know deep within themselves that this thing God will never approve. I remember. There was a man. I was very promiscuous when I was younger. And all my friends were mostly men. I don't have many women friends. Amen. And when I. <laughs> there was this guy I met him. And I would do everything to keep him. Because I wasn't saved. I don't know the word of God. Neither did I know how to. Pray properly. So, I found myself doing things just to make this relationship work. Making sacrifices. You know, which things cost me extra. And then when the thing didn't work out. How I knew that the thing was not going to work out. When it was time for me to get my citizenship, I made some errors. And my citizenship was denied. Because I wanted my citizenship. My U.S. citizenship. So I could go and marry the guy. And have him for myself. But God have a different plan. So let me tell you. That was a want. And that's not the man that God had for me. I, I, I would send that man what I have. I was generous to him. No matter what I did, it didn't work. So I pulled a prank. I don't know where that came from, but I pulled a prank. And it worked. And that's how I found out that this was not the man that the Lord had for me. I was not saved. I was still living in sin. And when... I had the revelation. I said, you know what? I think it's time for me to give my life to the Lord. <laughs> because here I am fighting for a man that's not my man. Here I am spending all that I have, all my time, my hard-earned money. Wasting my time. There was a time when I almost got arrested because of this man. Almost. And I said, you know what? I'm packing that up. So there are times when we are so selfish. We want some things that will only kill us. Many of us are fighting for things that is only going to choke the life out of us. Jesus. If you are here and you're going through this situation, I pray that you repent and start over. We cannot want certain things and when it don't happen, we get angry at God. We stop going to church. We stop praying. God has something special for you. 
he said in his time he will make all things beautiful now i came out here tonight to speak to a few people and i'm speaking from the heart this coming tuesday the 15th we're going on fasting for seven days no rice no bread no flour we're gonna cut down on all those carbs amen oh jesus hallelujah we cut, we cut it down and all those carbs for seven days no rice no crackers no pastries nothing no pasta no spaghetti no noodles no oodles and noodles <laughs> yes no wraps you know those sandwich wraps or those breakfast wraps none of those things unless you're gonna wrap it with some lettuce amen we're gonna avoid that type of food for seven days and i can guarantee you no crackers i can guarantee that you will feel better after the fasting if you are faithful in this fasting god will do something for you no carbs Somebody asks some question. Nothing that they use. You know some of those pasta, is made, they use rice to make it. Some of those pasta, they use beans. I think it's called vermicelli. The other day I was in the grocery store, yes, and I came upon the ones that looks like glass. It's pasta, but it looks like glass. It's made out of vermicelli. Vermicelli. I can't pronounce it properly. Vermicelli. No, I and and it tastes it tastes real good. It's made out of beans. I don't know how they get it to look like that. I don't know what they add to it, but whatever they did, it's made out of beans. And I like it too. <laughs> I kind of like it too, but you can't have too much of it because no. Nah. Yes, welcome, welcome. If you're just joining, God bless you. I'm saying, people of God, let me tell you something. When you wait on the Lord and the right person comes, you'll begin to ask yourself, all this pushing and shoving and fighting that you have been going through for all these years, no, you don't have to do it anymore because God bless you with the right spouse. All the discomfort and the disrespect and all the chaos that you have been facing. Your life has been upside down for all these years. Everything discombobulated, mixed up. Amen. When the right person enter your space, that won't happen. We, we, we begin to fight. We realize that we were fighting for nothing. Wasting of time. And people of God, this is the work of Satan. When you end up with the wrong person around you. And all you have, many people... They have some sickness and some diseases that came from stress and depression. Some young people are sick. And it came from stress and depression. Struggling just to make ends meet. Fighting just to keep this person. I said it earlier. I did everything I could and I couldn't keep this man. 
I gave him my money, it didn't work. Buy him clothes, shoes, it didn't work. Spend my time on him, didn't work. So I decided to quit. But before I quit, I pull a prank. And it turned out that I was right the whole time. When something don't fit, don't force it. Many times, it's because of how we feel. It's our feelings that we are fighting for. I came to talk to somebody. It's true. Wasted time. We invest time in the wrong thing. Many of us, we neglect ourselves. Oh, Jesus. We neglect ourselves. We neglect our career. We neglect our, our, our health. We neglect, yes, uh, uh, we don't have any life. We don't take care of ourselves. Why? Because the one person that we are killing ourselves to get to, don't want to be bothered with us. And God don't want it to happen. Mm -hmm. It's true. When the right person show up on the scene, they don't have to touch you. They just talk to you and it change your whole world. They just look at you. <laughs> they just gaze at you, look in your eyes and it change your story. And when you look back at your track record, you get to understand. So what have I been doing all my life? Fighting for nothing? Making, making, creating enemies out of the wrong people? Causing public disturbance? Harassing the wrong people because I'm in my feelings and I want what I want when I want it. It makes us unhappy. It makes us bitter. It makes us miserable. It's true. Many people right now, today, even during this pandemic, you see, it might sound funny. But this pandemic has opened our eyes. Many of us were hanging around some thieves. And we didn't know. And the pandemic exposed them. God was trying to show us and we didn't pay attention. Many of us have been hanging around some scammers. And we didn't see it. Because we were clouded. Many of us have been, oh Jesus of mercy, I came to talk to somebody here tonight. Many of us have been hanging around some criminals and we didn't know until the pandemic step enter our zone. So we pray that God have his way in our life and whatever God want for us, that what we want. Even it don't look right and once God send it, it will connect. It will connect. Hallelujah. Even if it don't feel right. Eventually. Once it came from God. Once God approved it. Not man's approval. God's approval. Hallelujah. My God. So we are going to stop waiting for man to approve anything for us. We want God to approve it. Whatever God said about us, that's what we want. We don't want what man said. We're not going to fight with man anymore for anything at all. People of God, let me share something with you. Many of us are tired of fighting. And it's not going anywhere. History. Keep on repeating itself. Mm -hmm. History continue to repeat itself. Many people are investing in the wrong relationship. And God did not approve it. And they will cut your throat because of that. You can't tell them that. You have to leave people alone. 
and let God work it out for them. I came to talk to somebody here tonight. It's not what you want anymore. It's what God has for you. You see, when Jesus was in the wilderness, fighting with Satan, Satan was there frustrating him and he was unfasting. The angel of the Lord couldn't come until Jesus rebuked him. So many people, the, the right person cannot come until you get rid of the wrong person. When you let the wrong person go, then the right person will come. The Bible declared that when Jesus rebuked Satan, then the angels came to minister to him. Satan was there tempting him. So he was not focused. He was fasting. He was angry. He, 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 you know, the devil was poking him, poking him, poking him. Quoting scriptures to him. And when Jesus got frustrated, he couldn't bring any more scripture to Satan because he was releasing scriptures and the devil was releasing scripture. Satan was trying to verify his action. Jesus was telling him, sit down and be quiet. And then Jesus got upset and said, get behind me, Satan. Get out of here. So you see, he stepped away from the word and said, look, don't make me smack you. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to let go and let God have his way. It's time for us to let go. Stop fighting for something that God don't want you to have. Stop fighting. Stop getting upset. Stop malicing people because you're malicing the wrong people. People, God sent people to your life to bless you. Good night, Bishop. God sent people to your life to bless you. And you are busy destroying those relationships because you don't get what you want and God didn't give you what you're fighting for. I came to talk to somebody here tonight. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. My God. It's time to wake up because he who has started a good thing in your life shall surely take it to the perfect day of Jesus Christ. My God. He who has started something good in your life is about to bless you. Man, Kosaya. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mighty God. People have been fighting, pushing and pulling and talking. Why? They want what they want. And God is not giving it to them. He said in my time I will make all things beautiful. What he has for you is greater than what you are fighting for. It's time. It's time for you to be serious about God. It's time for you to pay attention. You are saying that you are getting old and nothing good is happening. And God is saying. I am right here. Once you let the things go that is not half God. Let the things go that's not of God. Then the things of God will come. Once you let Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me drink some water. Once you begin to let go. That which is not of God. Then the things of God will begin to happen in your life. Children of God. It's time for us to be wise. Be wise. Use wisdom. If the thing is not working, stop fight. If it don't fit, don't force it. Leave it to God. The devil was tormenting Jesus. The Bible said he went into the wilderness to, tempt, to be tempted by the devil. And until the devil was ooh, gotten kicked to the curb, then the angels came. So until you let go of the bad things, then good things will start happening in your life. Until you get rid of your bad habit, because I'm just going to call it a habit that is bad. 
We need to let go of that which is, you know, the Bible said, hold on to that which is good. This is the word that, oh, hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this message. My God. Hey. Hey, Jesus. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mighty God. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20, it tells us, it said, despise not prophesying. Again, it says, test all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from the appearance of evil. <laughs> Let me look around me. Jesus. Excuse me for a second. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. The Bible make it clear. Jesus. Somebody put up that scripture for me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 to 22. Hallelujah. It said you shouldn't despise prophecy. Number one. Somebody said pressure pipe burst. <laughs> Glory to God. Why would you be angry with someone? Because they, many, many times, the people that many of us chase after, they're running away from us. They have to run because that's not what God wants for us. So they know that they're only going to be there taking up space and wasting time. God has big plans for many of us. The hand of God is upon our life. And if we are holding on to the wrong people, then we are blocking our blessing. We are pushing back the assignment that God has for us. I came to talk to somebody here tonight. According to the word of God, it said, don't despise prophecy. It says, despise not prophesying. It said, test all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. No, this is where it get juicy. Because many of us, we like to watch some movies with all those men chopping off other man's head. It's an evil appearance. Woman doing the same thing. Those appearance of evil, it's also in the book of Deuteronomy. Don't be careful what you place your eyes on because the eyes are windows of the mind. Oh, Jesus. Anything that look evil, avoid it. It is the word of God. It said, avoid it, abstain, meaning don't, don't. Stay away. The same way when we go on fasting, we abstain from intimacy with our spouse. So we sit down and we speak to our spouse and we let them know that, you know, we're, we're going on fasting. And uh, I'm talking to married people here, okay? <laughs> 
when you are married and you're going on fasting, you need to tell your spouse. You and your spouse need to be in agreement. You need to fix up your spouse so they don't provoke you during your fasting. You need to mind your business in the bedroom when you are going on fasting. So when you are under fasting, you and your spouse are on the same page. Many people, they have certain problems and it's only when they are on fasting because they hide the fasting from their spouse. No, you cannot hide fasting. When you fast, you abstain from the things that you do that... Oh, Jesus, who am I talking to? Hallelujah. Who am I talking to? Oh, hallelujah. Somebody just take a moment. Go ahead and share this message. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The Bible said, don't despise prophecy. It's in more than two places in the Bible. We should not despise it. We should not despise the assembly of men. Meaning that where people gather to pray, we shouldn't despise it. We shouldn't speak against it. We shouldn't speak against church. When you know Jesus, who am I talking to? We shouldn't despise the things of God. Somebody said, I'm learning here, Rev. Yeah, I came out here to speak to a few people that don't understand their position in marriage. In relationship so when I'm speaking on fasting I'm directly speak about this matter I'm directing it to married couples when you are married and you're going on fasting you need to tell your spouse so when you are in the fasting they don't provoke you for intimacy for romance tomorrow is Valentine's Day so our fasting begins the day after Valentine's Day because many people take this time out to get even closer. We understand. Amen? Somebody said fasting is serious business. Yes, and this is why when you're married, you cannot hide it from your spouse if you're married. You're supposed to tell them if you're a woman and you're joining in the fasting Tell your husband, spend time with your husband before you get into the fasting so you're not being provoked. According, it's in the book of Corinthians. The, te the enemy will mess you up. So tell your spouse, you're coming to agreement. Sister Audrey, you're married, so I can tell you. My brother Sanders, you're married. We can discuss this. When you are not married, it's a whole different thing if you are dating. You are not expected to go into bed and lay down and do the things that married people do. Right, Sister Denise, um, Lindsay? Right. We know our place. And this is why many people will say, I'm not married. I can date whoever I want. You're lying. That's not true. That's not of God. He wants you to wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Abstain from sex. A lot of people won't tell you this, but I'm here to let you know. You can't punch me. So I'm going to tell you with a scripture. Relax yourself. You need to wait. Calm yourself. Put your flesh under subjection. When I, when I was in the world, it was different from when I came to Christ. When you, if you are in Christ and you are waking up in the bed of adultery tomorrow, it's called presumptuous sin. The Bible said, if I don't know it's a sin, now you're new. If you wake up tomorrow next to someone who is not your spouse, you're not married to them. You're, if you are not saved, you're on your own. If you are saved and you're going to wake up. <laughs> In the bed of fornication. In the bed of adultery. And because it's Valentine's Day. Don't allow anybody to drag you into sin. Don't allow anybody to drag you down into sin. Because it's va and talk about it's Valentine's Day. So what? So what? Every year we have it. When you're married, you can have Valentine's Day every day. 
you can be sweet you can do all the roses and the chocolate and this teddy bear business and the love love talk the the, 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 the love languages whichever way you want to put it if you are not married and you find yourself setting up appointment making reservation in hotels to go and sleep with someone else who is married you need to stop it you need to repent and i mean it you see when i was before i got saved i have to say when i was when i lived in florida i wasn't baptized i was in church i go to church very religiously i would be in church religiously every sunday but there was a guy that i really really like and I let him wait one year. He waited, yes. Literally one year he waited on me. We hang out, we go out to eat and do all kinds of things. But he had to wait on me. And one night I was in a hotel with him. In Miami. Not Miami, in Hollywood, Florida. It was... It was next to the casino, not far from the casino. And it was four o'clock in the morning. I think I said it right here before. It was four o'clock in the morning. I heard a knocking on the window, but I thought I was dreaming. I knew he was married. I knew he was also separated from his wife, but that does not change the fact that he was a married man. I did not know that was the last time I'm going to see him because of what was about to take place. Remember I said I allowed that man to wait one year. I'm not trying to prove anything. But I thought that would be the person for me because he's waiting. You know, when I met him he was going through his problems and I really didn't care because I'm not in church. And I'm minding my business. And people of God, when I lay there in that hotel room, sleep, fast asleep. You see how wicked the devil can be? The devil allow me to, fa to be fast asleep next to somebody's husband. Whether they have problems, yes or no, that's not my business. I didn't have any business falling asleep next to someone else's husband. And I heard... Somebody say, yes, Rebbe told us this story. Yes, I, I'm saying it tonight because tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I heard the knocking. It, it, didn't, it happened in August, right before I moved from Florida. No, I'm lying. It happened in, during tax time. <laughs> it happened during tax time. So while I was there, I thought I'm dreaming. Now, when you're messing with somebody, husband, as a woman, you don't have no business falling asleep. You don't have no business falling asleep. And I fell asleep. I was knocked out. And I heard the knocking, but I thought I was dreaming. And then the, it was consistent. I'm like, why is, is this a knocking? Is this somebody really calling out the man by his name at the window? Jesus Christ. And the knocking continues. So I wake him up. I said, listen, there is somebody calling you. Is that you? He said, oh, that's my wife. I said, how did she know we are here? He said, I don't know. I said, you need to get out of here. Get out of here. Get out and go and talk to her. People of God, this was in 2008. Uh huh. Let me check now. 2018 make 10 years. 19, 20, 21, 20, 14 years ago. 40. <laughs> I would never forget it. Hallelujah. Mighty God. 14 years ago.
Mm. Oh, hallelujah. The woman wouldn't stop and he jumped up and he was <laughs> he was talking back to her somehow and he went out there but he didn't just stop she was she's in the military the woman is in the military I did not know what she looked like I have never met her before and I was so comfortable I was not dressed properly so when he left, it was 4 o'clock in the morning. He left and he went to the, I don't know how the security guard didn't, know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what happened. But I think he went down to the office to call the cops or the security guard. So he left me in the room with the woman standing at the door. And she said to me, I got up out of the bed and started getting dressed. And she said to me, so I stood near to a chair. Should in case she approached me, I could defend myself with that chair. I heard who she is. She's from the military. And that would be a form of self-defense. She said to me, oh, so you are the girlfriend. I can't speak because I get caught with my hand in the cookie jar. The woman is married. Whether they are together or not, they are legally married. So I have no rights to talk. I know my rights. I kept my mouth shut. The woman, she said to me, so you're the girlfriend. I didn't answer. She said, let me tell you something. Be careful because he have HIV. I did not look at this woman. Because those things I don't worry about. I know who I am. When she finished talking, he came and he rushed her. Somehow she left. And he came in the room to finish, get dressed and said, um, she should be lucky that you are one of the nice ones that won't fight. I said, you're talking to me? Why would I fight your wife? Do I look like a mad person? I'm not going to lie to you. That was the last day I saw that man. What she said, and she said it out loud, she said, I don't want anything from you. All I needed was for you to sign the check. There was like a rebate check that we received. I think it was during the time when George Bush was in power. So they gave out those checks that both um, parties had to sign, like husband and wife had to sign it and in order for her to cash it. He said, I don't want the money. You can have the money. Leave me alone. But, you know, that was God saving me. That was God saving me because he had a ministry for me that I did not know about. I wasted my time laying in bed, falling asleep next to somebody, husband. But I asked God to forgive me. And the woman, I got caught. And let me tell you something, people of God. I made a vow that I will never do that again. I did. That was in, uh, I think it was in January. It was during that time when it, people were filing their taxes. So I've never seen him since then. It's been 14 years and knocking on wood. I thank God. 14 years ago, this thing happened. So tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And I came to talk to a few people here, men and women. Don't make any reservation to go and spend time with someone because of a one day holiday. If you don't have a wife or a husband, it's not for you. Spend it with your children. Spend it with your friends. Celebrate your single life until God give you that person that he has ordained for your life. Listen, it feels good, but when you get caught, it's a disgrace. You know why? I am very transparent. Because there are many of you who are living that life. And I want you 
not to make the mistakes that I made. Many of you here are already booked a hotel to go sleep with someone who is not yours. Don't do it. Take my foolish advice. Don't do it. You might regret it. You heard what I said. I thought it was all good because the man waited one year. But what's the use in waiting one year? And then your wife, the devil is a liar. People of God, don't waste your time. Stop wasting your time with the wrong people. Stop fighting over the wrong relationship. Let God bless you with what God has for you. When God bless you, you don't have to go searching for anybody. You don't have to go digging into anything. You don't have to get caught in a hotel with somebody else's spouse. No, that's disgraceful. I made a vow that will never happen to me again. Know that I'm in Christ. I'm too nice for that. There are, we need to know who we are. We do things when we don't know who we are. When we don't know what we mean to the Lord. This is no joke. It happened to me 14 years ago. When you don't know your worth. When you don't know your worth, you'll fall for the wrong things. And that's a want. If you want to be with someone just for Valentine's Day, it's a want. It's not a need. If you think you're going to spend one night, you know you can contract all kind of... Look, you can get COVID. No, people used to worry about all different type of sexually transmitted disease you can get covid and die this is serious you can get covid and die this is not a joke so i'm here to let you know i might be sitting all up in my house and you're saying pastor you don't know what you're talking about i need to go and spend some time with somebody so i can feel good about myself you're joking you need to love yourself Mm -hmm. You need to love yourself. I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. We are going on fasting starting Tuesday. Why? Because I know many of you, if you are, if we, if we had started the fasting before, you would have broken it for Valentine's Day, even though you're, you're not married. It's true. You don't, let me tell you this. Even if you're spending time on the phone with a person that you are not married to, it's called you're making time for someone that you're not married to. It's called cheating. And God is jealous. God is jealous. I came to talk to somebody here. God is jealous. And don't allow one night of pleasure to cause you a lifetime of pain. <laughs> if you want to know the people that were playing games during the month of February. Look how many pregnant women you will find in November. Giving birth in November. Just check to see how many women will have give birth during the second week of November. And you can tell they, those women get pregnant on Valentine's Day. Or that weekend of Valentine's. That's how you know. People of God, listen to me. This don't take this message light. Many hotels are fully booked, and a half of these people are not married. Many hotels right now, it doesn't matter if it's one star, two star, three, four, or five star, they are fully booked because people want to be wanted. 
people feel that they have to do these things in order to feel wanted no when the right person come in your life when the right person is with you every day is valentine's day i came to talk to somebody here tonight and i'm keeping it real there are some people right now that walk away from home because they want to spend it with other people. And that's not of God. So I came to let you know, people of God, be wise. Take care of your spouse. The right person will never disgrace you during this time. They will wait if you are dating someone. And they really and truly are interested in spending a lifetime with you. They won't jump the gun. They'll wait. The right person. They want to have a relationship with your mind. Not just your body. With your mind. Oh my God. They want to spend a lifetime so they're not just going to jump into the bed because of a day that was set apart for people who are married. Jesus loves you. Take care of yourself. Somebody says serious thing. It's true. We can't afford to allow because it's a one day that was set aside you know how many people will be caught cheating during this time? Do you know how many people, that, what they call that thing that they pay these group of people to go around and check for those who are cheating and, and, and post, what you call it? Bright, put that bright light. What, what do they call I can't remember. They follow you around and like a, you get a private detective to follow that person around. happy birthday god bless you so when you're married you will have to celebrate valentine's day and your birthday wow that's nice you see whatever is due to caesar we have to give it to caesar but if you are not married just leave that thing alone wait on the lord they are investigators, but there's a name for it here in America. They follow you around, and then when they when they finally crack down on you, they use those bright lights and the camera and everything that you can't hide. It's called oh, it's called cheetahs, right? They they use that big bright light on you where you can't hide no more, and then they begin to tell you everything that you have done, the phone calls, everything. Oh yeah people of God don't waste time know your worth don't jump don't don't jump the gun don't fall for that private eye don't fall for that one night stand don't do it just because it's a holiday know your worth come off of the clearance rock we cannot afford to be common anymore. The night that woman, the morning that woman showed up at the hotel, that was the last time I saw that guy. I don't want to see him anymore. I, I'm telling you, if, maybe if I see him now, I would not recognize him. Yes, show yourself some love. Don't, because it's Valentine's Day, you're, you're depressed because you're single. Don't do that. Don't do that. Spend time with family and friends. And if you live alone and just light a candle and have your candlelight dinner, take pictures, treat yourself nice. You don't have to put yourself out there like that and then you regret it the next year when you found your husband or you found a wife. You're hiding these things. because No, you don't have to go through all that. May the Lord bless you. The next Valentine's Day that's coming for you, single people, you will be spending it with the person that the Lord has ordained for you. Don't, don't push anything because of a holiday. No, don't do that. Know your worth. Mm -hmm. 
Know your worth. Jesus. Know your worth. You can spoil yourself. You can dress up nice. You can set that dining table. You can fix those candles. You can you can get dressed and go down to your dining table and enjoy a nice meal and pray and ask God, Lord, I'm setting this table and I'll make a declaration right now that the next year I will do it with my husband or I will do it with my wife. Declare it and it shall be established. You don't have to jump into bed with anybody just to feel good. No! It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Dress nice. Set that table. You might not want candlelight dinner. So you, you, you dim the light. Take some pictures. And save it. And when you get married, you show that person. I said, this I enjoyed alone. I prayed that God bless me with a spouse. And a year later tonight, I'm with you. You know how many respect that person will have and have for you knowing that you did it on your own and you waited many of us our track record don't look good it's time for us to start cleaning up our track record it's that yes every valentine's we have a different person in bed no no i challenge you if you are here and you're single set that table tomorrow Yes, and prepare yourself, dress up, even make a little video. And next time, next year this time, you show it to the person and say, you know what, I made this video because I was on the platform and this is what pastor was saying. I need to set the table and pray and declare that this time next year, I will be dining with someone special that is for me. That God has sent me. Remember. The thing will come to pass. Set that table. If, it, if, if it's so important to you. Pour some roses in your bed. Lay in the bed and make a video. And next year. This time. <laughs> and pray. And ask God to send someone to join you in your bed next year. That will be there. With the ring on the finger. Yes. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be obedient. People of God, don't just do it because it's Valentine's Day. And I'm not saying that, be, you know, because I know what it is like to be alone on Valentine's Day. I did it for a long time. For years. Buy your own flowers and your chocolate. Yes. Get whatever you need. Treat yourself nice. Dress up. Make a video. I'm telling you, take some pictures. Pray over it. And ask God to change your story. You see, put God first. Somebody said, every day is love. Every day is love day. Okay? But if it's so important to some people that they have to go out of their way to feel good just for one night that can kill you. My God. Pray. Since it's so important to you to have someone around. Some people don't feel like they can spend certain time alone. But God wants you to be alone so you can change your ways. So he can work on your character. So he can clean you up. Declare that next year, this time. This time next year, there will be someone around you who is interested to stay. Who has proposed or who you have proposed to. Mm -hmm. You have to be positive. 
You have to believe when you pray that God will answer you. So don't just jump in bed because it feels good to have someone next to you. It might look good, but it's not all good. It's true. Do you know how many hotels are full? Starting Friday. Friday night. Until Tuesday morning. Somebody says stay still. <laughs> Waiting for a good husband. My God. May the Lord bless you. Wait on the Lord, people of God. Let the person that's coming to you cherish you. Let the person that comes, when they come to you, they, they appreciate you. for. Listen to me, you don't have to do anything extra. There is somebody special for every one of us. It doesn't matter what you look like. There is somebody that's looking for someone who looks just like you. It doesn't matter how you speak. There is someone out there that's waiting for someone. Who, Jesus, that's looking for someone just like you. The way you walk people might not like the way you walk but there might there is someone out there waiting for someone who walk like the way you walk who talk like the way you talk who, who, who behave like the way you behave the right person is coming wait wait if you jump the gun and jump into bed with the wrong person then you're postponing the right person you're pushing back your marriage Hallelujah. Because you see what God will do after you finish playing around for Valentine's Day, birthday, anniversary, and all those days, guess what's going to happen? God is going to allow you to be single for a while so you can be clean. Many of you are praying for God to send anointed people to your life and you're not clean. You have to clean up. Hallelujah. Many of you, God is waiting for you to walk away from this foolishness that you're doing so he can prepare you for the person that he has for you. So it's time for you to come out of that ungodly relationship. It's Yes, I'm saying it. I'm not telling you if you're in a relationship for 25 years and not married to come out. No. I'm not going to tell you to walk out of something that you have 10 children or 5 children and it's not working. No, I'm talking about single people who are trying to date and dating married people. Or you need to wait for God to send the right person to your life. Wait. I'm not telling you to leave your husband. I'm not going to tell you to leave your wife. That's between you and God. My job is to tell you to wait on the Lord once you are single. I'm not telling you to go and divorce anybody. I don't do that. That's not my job. That is between you and the Lord. Amen? I'm speaking to those of you who are still in the dating scene. Where, yes, those of you who are involved with somebody else's wife. Those of you who are involved with someone else's husband. Some of you are dating some single people. And you are not even serious. Yet you call yourself a child of God. Yet you are in church speaking in tongues. If I ever catch you. <laughs> if I ever catch you. Yes, many married people will be alone on Valentine's Day. Why? Number one, the spouse have to work. Number two, the spouse say they're going to work and it's not really work. Number three, the spouse take a day off to go and hang out with the wrong people. But I came to let you know, as a married person, you have to know your place, know where you stand, and you and your spouse have to be on the same page. If you are not, then you're going to have to go and work that out with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're here and you're married, sort your thing out. We're going on fasting on Tuesday. If you're not married, don't try to do it 
because you think it's in style. Uh-uh. When you are a child of God, you put that flesh under subjection and wait. Wait. Valentine's Day can be every day. Like I said, you can light those candles and jump into some nice clothes and prepare that moment and make a video and pray if you're single and ask daddy jesus that this time next year you will have that person that he sent to release let heaven open and release your god-given spouse so you can enjoy the so-called one day that was set aside for red and white amen <laughs> now we're getting ready to go to florida on the 25th uh-huh 12 days from now we're going to florida to pray to pray and pray and it's a free event I encourage you to come I'm inviting you maybe you're single and you want to get married you desire to get married come and let us pray for heaven to open up and release that spouse amen hallelujah God want the best for you God want to see that you're making an effort there are some of us that whatever God has for us, we don't even deserve it, but he's going to give it to us. Oh, yeah. Many of your God is going to surprise you by your obedience because you wait. Hallelujah. So I encourage you. Join us. Join us in Florida. The 25th, the 26th, and the 27th. So we can come in agreement. <laughs> so we can come in agreement. Hallelujah. So we can come in agreement for whatever you need from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell somebody it is well. Whatever God said about you, it will come to pass. And I will say this every day. Because I see people are receiving breakthroughs. Things that God said about them is coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Many of us, you know, we have to pray our way out of some situations in order for a change to come. Many of us, we have to change our prayer points. We can't pray for the same thing. We have to change our prayer point. When Daniel prayed for 21 days, it did not, there was no results. But on the 22nd day, the angel of the Lord showed up and said, Daniel, guess what? The first day you started that fasting, God answered your prayer. But the devil hold me back. So we have to pray for those destiny helpers to be released. Daniel destiny helper was detained. So we have to pray for those destiny helpers to be released so things can happen for us. So I encourage you. I encourage you. Be focused, people of God. Amen? Be focused. Many of you that were on the live, I don't even have to discuss it. You see what the Lord did today. If you watch the broadcast, you will see what the Lord did for El Shaddai Prayer Tower today. And this is just the beginning of of something new remember last um last month we prayed for seven days for something new 
and now we receive something new let's see what god has for us what's coming next let's see who will be next to be blessed publicly hallelujah so i came to let you know We're still doing El Shaddai's pantry, El Shaddai's closet, El Shaddai's wallet. Amen. Declare it, sister. Declare it. Amen. And yes, uh, on Friday, the box, it's, it's like... Two barrels of food was shipped to Grenada. Whatever is in the box is enough to hold into a little over two barrels. So, when it gets to Grenada, they will send us the pictures to let you see. That's what we did with January's charity funds. It was used to purchase stuff to send to Grenada. Amen. So continue to be a blessing to the ministry so the ministry can can continue to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. The stuff was shipped on Friday. Glory to God, you know. So that burden and that weight has left our shoulders. We're not carrying that weight anymore because the stuff was shipped. It's enough to hold two barrels. Amen. We give God honor and praise. I thank God for the woman of God that's behind this as well. That's helping because I don't know what we would do without her. I'm in Connecticut where things are much difficult. Especially where I'm located because I'm in the countryside of Connecticut. Amen. Hallelujah. So we give God honor and praise for this woman of God that is behind this. She don't want her name to be mentioned, but she is hand and foot for us. Glory to God. Uh, and you know, the Bible declared that give honor to those who honor is due. So we have to give her her props not everyone want the world to know what they are doing for the ministry but she went hard she even used some of her own money when she found out that they needed more stuff to fill up the big box so we give god praise amen hallelujah once again, I just want to say it has been shipped. It will, I guess it will leave on Tuesday, the, which is the 15th, the day of our fasting. So we pray to God that it, that, that thing won't be destroyed. It won't be, yes, we have to cover it. May the Lord bless it all the way to Grenada. Hallelujah. And I'm thinking that we're going to have to. At some point, maybe send a few things down to Jamaica. So when we are there, we can distribute it. Amen. <laughs> to the Jamaicans that are on the platform and those in surrounding areas. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Welcome, Portland. God bless you. Kingston, we have people in Kingston, we have people in Portland, we have people in, in Spanish Town, we have people in Maypen, Clarendon, we have people in Mandeville, we have people in Linstead, we have people, a lot of places, I don't remember everywhere right now off the bat, but concerning the ones that I've, I already met, yeah yeah amen we have people in saint catherine quite a few people in saint catherine 
Amen. Glory to God. Somebody said, Port more. I thought you're in Kingston. Behave yourself. <laughs> okay, Port more. That's still St. Catherine, right? Amen. So we will send some things to Jamaica as well, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. When I was there the other day, I had to. Oh, uh, Sister Jackie, you will take care of the Westmoreland area. God bless you. I know you will. The Lord love you for that. Amen. When I was in Jamaica, summer of last year, I had to go to the grocery store because I wanted to cook during the last days that I'm there before I came back home. And I went to the grocery store and the things were so expensive. I was so angry when I see the price that I had to pay for just a few items that I needed, not wanted, needed. So I went grocery shopping. I needed to bring back stuff here too. So I, <coughs> it was very expensive, excuse me. And, and these are some of them that I didn't have to purchase them. I could have just as well sent stuff home and have it you know but yes god god is amazing god is amazing we thank god for what he's doing amen it's very expensive there because i was there and i wanted something from the grocery store and i and i i couldn't believe the prices and it it made me upset but i know it's just their system so i just take what i you know what I needed and leave and I like to have certain Jamaican groceries in my kitchen that is seasoning for one and um, a few other items that I can use when I'm cooking hallelujah it's very expensive when I went there it's cheaper in Dominican Republic Yeah, it's I love Dominican Republic and the food is cheaper over there. Yeah. Yeah. I love and it's funny because it's a Spanish country, but I love it there. I love it there and the people there they are warm. They are very nice. They treat us nice. When when I go there I feel like I'm still in America. When I'm in Dominica Republic and I get the fruits that I get in Jamaica, they have it there and they are, you know, things are different. Things are different. But when I go to Jamaica, oh my God, it's a whole different thing. So people of God, once again, my time is up. I'm going to get some rest. I know tomorrow I will come, but in the evening because I am going to sleep. <laughs> whatever happened today i preached until my clothes was wet yeah usually i preached today until my clothes was wet when i get off of facebook that was not the end i had things to do so that i couldn't do on the live so yes my clothes was wet when i got home i want you to know ministration takes a lot out of you and it's spiritual so i'm not gonna promise you that in the morning i'm gonna be on the live moreover but i'll be here amen i love you all if the lord touches your heart to be a blessing to the ministry we are we are collecting money for el shaddai's wallet we yes so if the Lord touch your heart to send off your charity donations, I encourage you to do so. If you are not a member of any church, I encourage you that you can join us, South America. Yes, that's what I realize. South America is cheaper too. If you are not a member of a church and you desire to join us, the number is 860 six three four eight five five seven 
that is 860-634-8557. I want you to know that if you are a member of a church and you want to partner with us, you can do so at the same number. You can text us or send us, yes, on WhatsApp, 860-634-8557. And that's the same number to order your prayer shawl, your anointing oil, your prophetic salt, your t-shirt, whatever it is. And your little package. I know I have not announced anything in a long time. But this thing here. It has the holy water, holy oil. Holy incense and some soil with a wooden cross in the middle. Amen. And it came from Bethlehem. Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Nazareth. See? Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and Nazareth. I encourage you to place your orders for the prayer shawl. Select your colors, any color. Your anointing oil, your holy water, whatever it is, your prophetic salt. Place your orders. They have been anointed, sanctified, and blessed. Sitting down waiting to be distributed. Amen. And these make good Valentine's gift. You can buy one for your mom or your dad. Many people don't sleep well at night. You can anoint yourself. These oils are very precious. They work. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. As you continue to walk in the light. Amen. Once again, my time is up. I have to go. It is very draining. It is very draining today. Oh my God. But I thank God that I was available for him to use me. That's all I can say. I thank God that I was available so he could use me. I give myself away so he could use me. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yes. Once again, it was breakfast with Jesus. Remember to share the broadcast. And whatever the Lord, many of you are here and you, you know, you're looking for a place of worship. You're looking, if the Lord touch your heart and you want to pay your tithes, you can do so. Send it to Zelle, PayPal or Cash App. You want to bless us with a love gift or you want to sow a seed during the fasting. You want to contribute towards our charity. That's the same number. 860-634-8557. My time is up. I have to go. God bless you all. <laughs>